Hey everyone, and welcome to our video on graphical representations of cutoffs. So often, you know, we already talked about um, the basics of cutoffs, but often the way that it's tested on the exam is through the use of graphs and really trying to interpret graphs and figuring out how changes in cutoffs will change the testing characteristics we've talked about, sensitivity, specificity, PPV, NPV. One of the common graphical representations is these overlapping normal distributions. Um, as shown in the left hand side of the page. And importantly, I think one reason this tends to confuse people is because people aren't oriented to exactly what's going on in this case. So when you see this graph, what you're really looking at is test result along the x-axis with higher test results as you move left to right. Um, and the, the curves actually represent patients with disease and patients without disease. And then the line in the middle represents the cutoff that's selected with results to the right of that cutoff being a positive test result, the results to the left of that cutoff being a negative test result. So once you've been oriented to that um, graph, you can then figure out how sensitivity, specificity, PPV, and MPV are represented. So again, to, as a reminder, sensitivity is the probability of getting a positive test result given you have the disease. So I would say among patients with the disease, given you have the disease, what is the chance you have a positive test result? So sensitivity would represent this area shaded in purple divided by the total area of, of those with the disease. Similarly, specificity is the probability of getting a negative test result given you do not have the disease. So that would be you know, given you do not have the disease, it would be this area shaded in purple divided by the total area under the disease negative curve. Those two are a little bit easier to figure out when looking at this graph. I will say I struggle a bit more with PPV and PV. So PPV is the probability of having the disease given you had a positive test result. So that would be the area in red to the right of this cutoff divided by the total area, including this bit among patients without the disease who had a false positive result. And then conversely, NPV, probability of not having the disease given a negative test result, is the area under the green uh, graph to the left of this cutoff divided by the total area to the left of this cutoff. I personally find it much more difficult to interpret PPV, NPV, and how they change with cutoffs. So what I tend to do is just think about how will this change in the cutoff affect sensitivity or specificity? And then remember that sensitivity tracks with NPV and specificity tracks with PPV. Remembering the P and PPV with the P and specificity. So if I can figure out what's going on with sensitivity specificity, I can inherently know what's going on with PPV and PV. So for example, let's say that the cutoff is pushed to the right, such that the new cutoff actually lies in this general area. Then if we think about sensitivity, so sensitivity is the probability of getting a positive test result given you have the disease. We'd say among those with the disease, how many had a positive test result? And we can see that with this increase in the cutoff, the sensitivity has gone down. The amount of area under that disease positive curve that's to the right of this new cutoff is smaller than it had been with the initial cutoff. At the same time, if we look at specificity, which again is a probability of getting a negative test result given you do not have the disease, we can see that now with this cutoff pushed all the way to the right, the entire area of the disease negative curve is actually to the left of this new cutoff and therefore specificity has gone up. And then because sensitivity has gone down, I know NPV has also gone down and because specificity has gone up, I know PPV has also gone up. So again, I, I find it much more intuitive to figure out the sensitivity and specificity looking at these graphs and then just use that to assume what would happen with PPV, NPV, given we know the association between each. As usual, I've included a few questions after this lecture to really get some practice applying these principles. 
But I think the main takeaway, which is related to the, the uh, basics of cutoffs lecture is that a more extreme cutoff will lead to a decrease in the false positives with an increase in specificity in PPV. And will also lead to an increase in false negatives with a decrease in sensitivity and a decrease in MPV. I encourage you to try the practice problems associated with this lecture to make sure that you have a, a thorough understanding. As usual, please comment, like, subscribe, and good luck.